Bible reading is from Revelation chapter 19, verse 4 to verse 9. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who was seated on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And from the throne came a voice saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, small and great. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Wonderful. Thank you, James. Uh, And you start making your way uh, down uh, to the front there. Uh, those of us who are in the pews, keep that passage open. Lovely, that's it. Squidge in if you're first here, make some space. Lovely. Well, as they finish filtering on in, uh, let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you speak to us through it. Give us uh, good ears to hear what you have to say to us. Help us to uh, change uh, through your word. Give us the power to do that. Excite us by your new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I think we are all pretty much there. Wonderful. Um, I wonder what your favorite type of story ending is. There's loads of great stories out there, films, books, and good stories have a good ending. Maybe you love a bit of a, a happy ending. Maybe uh, in Canto, for example, you know, Mirabel rescuing the family back together, rescuing the family home. You know, and she realizes even though she doesn't have magical powers, she is still a special person. Oh, what a happy ending. Or what about uh, film of the year, film of the decade, Top Gun, Maverick. What a feel-good film with a feel-good ending. The enemy is defeated, you know, rivalry set aside, and Tom Cruise flies off into the sunset with the girl of his dreams. What a happy ending. And another great ending from Top Gun, of course, is that mustaches and aviators are back in fashion, baby. Come on. Although... I see that none of you guys are rocking it yet. No, okay, fair enough. Um, maybe that's just a bit too happy for you, though. Maybe you like something a bit more real, a bit more meaty, something like a, a heroic sacrifice. Tony Stark at the end of Avengers Endgame, sacrificing himself to save people from Thanos. Well, I wonder if you've ever thought, how does the real story of the Bible end? See, the Bible's made up of lots of little stories, but it is one big story that spans all time, all of human history, and it tells the story of Jesus and his people. Well, how does it end? Sometimes we think of floaty clouds, but it's more like those endings we've heard there. There is heroic sacrifice, an enemy defeated, and there is a happy ever after. Well, we're going to focus in on, on one aspect of that today, uh, looking at the book of Revelation. Revelation's at the end of the Bible, but it's, and it, it's giving us a little keyhole, a little window in, into what the end of the Bible story will be. And so let's uh, read that again uh, now. There. It says, Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like a roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah! For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and the bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. So did you see that? Verse 7, the wedding of the Lamb has come. 
The end of the Bible story, the end of human history is all gearing up to one big, awesome, final, forever wedding. Wow! But a wedding for who? See, a wedding needs uh, someone to be the groom, someone to be the husband, doesn't it? And it needs someone to be the bride, the wife. So who's the groom? Well, look again at verse 7. The wedding of the lamb has come. The wedding of the, sorry, what, the wedding of the lamb. Did I read that right? You mean like a lamb as in like a baby sheep, as in like one of these things here? No, that, that, that can't be right, can it? Does sheep get married? Uh, I mean, like, that doesn't make sense. Oh. See, no, the lamb, the lamb with the capital L in Revelation and the rest of the Bible is talking about a person, someone who is willing to let themselves be sacrificed in order to rescue people from sin. The Lamb, with a capital L, was someone who let themselves be sacrificed in order to rescue people from sin. That's right, it's Jesus. Jesus is the groom at the final forever wedding. Oh, we can't actually see the Lamb anymore. That's fine, let's put him there. That's not going to stay up now. Oh, wonderful. It always goes well in the rehearsal, doesn't it? And then. Right, great, wonderful. The groom is ready. Um, okay, well, uh, who is the groom marrying? The groom, Jesus. Who, who's the lucky uh, person who gets to marry Jesus? Well, other bits of the Bible tell us that the bride at the final forever wedding is God's church. Not, not a building, but his people, all of God's people through all time. And so that, that, that includes me, that includes you, includes Abraham, Moses, Peter, Mary, Tamar. All of God's people from all time marrying Jesus, the Lamb. See, God gave us marriage way back at the start of the Bible, Genesis 2, before sin was in the world. Marriage is good. But he also gave us marriage to point us forward to this big, awesome, final, forever wedding. And so in that sense, marriage now is a bit like those film trailers that you watch before in the cinema that make you go, wow! Oh, wow, Dad, can we please, please go see that when it comes out? I can't wait to see that. Or it's a bit like uh, those restaurants that hand out those little sample tasters as you go back. A little spoonful of ice cream that makes you go, Mum, 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 please, can I get three of the biggest scoops of that? You just want the real thing. See, marriage now is a little sample taster of the banquet feast that is to come. And so marriage now points us forward to that. So we're going to think about that a little bit more. And for that, I'm going to need two helpers, a boy and a girl. Maybe you can see where this is going. Yeah, you seem to be up first. We're going to need a boy. Go on, don't let me down, lads. Yeah, go on. Thank you, good man. Wonderful. And what's your name, madam? Kaylee. Kaylee. Lovely Kaylee. And what's your name, sir? Wilf. Wilf. Lovely Wilf. What's your surname, Wilf? Wilf Devlin, lovely. Well, welcome to the marriage ceremony of the future, Mr. and Mrs. Devlin. Uh, you were right to be nervous about coming up. <laughs> um, lovely. Well, how, how does... Uh, don't worry, I can't actually marry. How does marriage now point us forward to the marriage that is to come? Well, the first one, I, I don't need props for this. There is difference. There is difference between men and women. Good difference. And there is even better difference at the big, awesome, final, forever wedding. Difference between God and humanity. Between creator and created. A difference between heaven and earth. Well, second way that marriage points us forward. It's your, mar- it's your wedding day, guys. We need to get you dressed up and ready, looking great. I can't believe you've come so unprepared for your wedding. Oh. Lovely, there we go. Okay, uh, and for the bride, of course, a dazzling white dress. Let's see if you can get that on. Is that the right way? That's t- go on, three you go. Help me out here. 
Let's find you again. Lovely, a dazzling white drip. Yeah, let's sort that out. There we go, lovely. Looking great on our wedding day. We want to look good on our wedding day. Maybe these guys don't, but we present ourselves as best we can on our wedding day. But as good as we might look on the outside, we all know that on the inside, we aren't clean. We aren't spotless. No one is righteous, not even one. But look at how we will be dressed on that final wedding day. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. On that final wedding day, because Jesus the Lamb has died, has paid for our sins, we will be spotless and clean. God's people will walk down the aisle in dazzling white, bright and clean, pure and spotless. Okay, what else do we need at the wedding? Well, there are vows and there's the giving of rings. I heard the bigger, the better. And I wasn't really sure which finger it goes on. So there you go. Um, I'll hold on to this one for now. What, where do rings end? Oh, that's right. <laughs> they don't end, do they? Rings are never ending. You can have that there, lovely. <laughs> and we give rings at weddings as a sign of unending love and faithfulness. But even at the best wedding now, uh, that would end. All weddings now will end because we all die. We even say that in the wedding vows, until death do us part. But at the final forever wedding, there will be no death. This love, this faithfulness will be eternal, forever, never ending. God has loved you since before time began and he will continue to love you forever. Okay, next thing to think about and because of all that, surely it is right to have a big old celebration. Okay, you can just have that, balance that on the top then, wonderful. Let me join in as well. Uh, well, (laughs) Weddings are big celebrations now, aren't they? Uh, In some cultures, the celebrations go on for more than a week. Thank you. I'll hold on that. Um, It's right to celebrate weddings. Weddings are good. The joining together of a man and woman of two families together. And so it's right we celebrate. Well, the, the big, awesome, final forever wedding there will be the biggest of celebrations, and rightly so, because God and humanity will be joined together. It's like the Garden of Eden again, but even better. And we see a glimpse of that, didn't we, in the reading earlier, like a, a roar of rushing waters, like loud peals of thunder. That's the people celebrating, worshipping. It will be a great celebration. Let's look forward to it. Okay, thank you guys uh, for that. Um, yeah, give them a round of applause. <laughs> Lovely, thank you, thank you. Great, well that's just for areas of weddings and marriage. I'm sure there are more to think through. Maybe that's something you could think through later over a lunch or a coffee. Um, but I hope looking at that has, has wet your appetite like the sample taster that gets you looking forward to the real feast. But maybe I, I recognize for some of us that marriage can be a hard and a painful topic. And to perhaps continue that analogy, instead of your sample being a sweet taster, maybe yours has stung. It's left a a bitter taste in the mouth. Or perhaps you feel you've been watching on as others have been offered samples, but one's never come your way. Well, if that's you, maybe that's drawn you away, uh, made you not excited by this imagery of marriage to come. But can I uh, gently encourage us then that all uh, of us, no matter what our experience or or lack of experience is now, all of us can look forward to this big, awesome, final forever wedding. This is a marriage that is without pain, without bitterness. Everyone is invited. Not one of God's people will miss out. 
Instead, this marriage is full of gracious, loyal love. Jesus, the Lamb, will be married to God's people forever. And let's look forward to that day. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for uh, this picture that we get of the new creation. Uh, Help. Uh, Would you help us to look forward to it? Help us to live in light of it. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for listening so well. You can go back to your seats now. Lovely.